Well, welcome to Life Joy Friends, and it's an absolute privilege and joy to have our first Life Joy Friends guest, Patrick and Paulette Sheard from Wooler. We're thrilled to have you. Hello, my friends. Hello, Hello Rebecca. Thank you for inviting us. It's a delight to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for all that you do, but you are the epitome of Life Joy, so we thought we'd start with you two. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Set the bar low to begin with. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no, 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 none at all. <laughs> well, if you'd just like to introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from and what you do. Absolutely. You can do that, right? Uh, well, as you've heard, uh, my name is Paulette, and uh, I actually was born and grew up in Essex. Don't tell anyone. Shh. And uh, that's where uh, I met Patrick, and uh, uh, we've been married for 30, I've forgotten, <laughs> 33 years. <laughs> And uh, yes, and we moved up, uh, lived most of our married life in uh, Kent, uh, where we ran our own post office and village stores. And then we moved up here, I think it's 10 years ago. Um, and we've become very involved with the uh, Woolly URC and uh, we run a bed and breakfast. Do you want to add anything to that? Well, no, that's said it all. Okay. Said it all. Okay. I think you were very succinct. Yes, I you. And you <laughs> should we let Patrick get a word in? I don't normally get a chance, so that's <laughs> fine. I'm, I'm the quiet. I'm the quiet one of the partnership. You know, anybody who knows us will tell you that I'm the shy and reserved one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and tell us about your lovely little ones. So we have two daughters. Um, Lydia and Anna, and Lydia, our eldest daughter, has been married for ooh, seven or eight years, something like that, maybe longer now, I can't I remember. Think it's ten years, and, um, and she is married to Jamie, lovely fella called Jamie, and they have two children. They have a young boy called Kobe, who's coming up three, and uh, a daughter, Mac, who is uh, about ten months old, nine or ten months old. Lovely. And we were staying with you the day of Mac's arrival, weren't we? Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Yes. The much anticipated arrival. So that was a joy. Yes. Very precious. Yeah. Lovely. So what gives you joy? Mm. I think there's plenty of things that give us joy. I'm going to go first. And Pauletta has got her own uh, particular things. But I think for me, joy comes largely from being outside. We enjoy outdoor life and particular joys are things like walking along the coast. We've just not long completed walking the Northumberland Coast Path, which is absolutely stunning and beautiful. So where we live in Wooler, we're easy across to the coast. And, and so we love that. We also love walking in the hills. And of course, we're in the foothills of the Cheviot here, which is equally beautiful. So just being outdoors brings great joy to both of us. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's, it's actually one of the things I get great joy from is seeing people using their gifts to bring joy and encouragement to others. So you give me great joy. And seeing other people, people who don't think they can do anything, people who maybe just have a kind word of encouragement or, or have read something beautifully or just something very, very simple like that. And if that brings joy to other people, that gives me joy. Oh, they are perfect answers. Absolutely. I've got one other joyful thing. Singing and dancing alone around the kitchen to a favourite song. Oh, nothing better. It can also be quite frightening, I have to say. <laughs> Just depends on your viewpoint. That's why really. I said alone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but you see, if you're making breakfast for your guests, I think they ought to enjoy that too. <sighs> Ooh, I'm not sure about that. You know, we do like them to come back for a second. <laughs> uh, we wouldn't want to put them off completely. 
Well, sometimes we can share knowledge and once it's shared, it can't be unshared, can it? That's true enough. That's very true. <laughs> you could go viral. Oh. <laughs> it, on the internet. That conjures up the wrong sort of pictures. Yeah, there. We definitely. Don't know that, definitely. That. <laughs> Lovely. And who gives you joy? You can go first this time. Ah, that's the right answer. 10 out of 10. Um, and my daughters, uh, son-in-law, grandchildren, they give me immense joy. And friends, friends give me immense joy too. So, yeah, and my faith gives me immeasurable joy. Um, you know, just, just knowing Jesus gives me immeasurable joy. I uh, don't think I've got much to add to that. I think um, we are blessed with really good friends. Um, that's one of the great blessings of life, I think, when you have a, a circle of friends that you know you can talk to about anything, confide in when you need to, share problems, share joys. And uh, so we've always been blessed, I think, throughout our married life with good friends. And um, they, bring, they bring great joy and enrichment to life, I think. Mm. Well, you're, you're powerhouses of giving yourselves, so you're very humble about that, about how much you do and offer. But it really, I mean, I always think about what it must have been like to come into your shop. I wish you'd had a shop when we'd known you. <laughs> we used to love our shop. It was, um, we were sad in many ways to leave. It was tremendously hard work. So we sold newspapers and would be up at five in the morning and finish late at night. And it was seven days a week. And we knew we'd got to the stage in life where we couldn't sustain that sort of, um, uh, that sort of work load um, indefinitely. So we'd got to the point where we decided it was time for a change, but we used to, um, you know, we used to have a great time in the shop. We had a good team of people working for us. We had a team of about 10 or 12 part-time staff. And we used to get up to all sorts of things and have some great laughs. I mean, we used to take part in the village carnival. Mm -hmm. um, Paulette was a tennis umpire on a carnival float one time, you know, calling out uh, to some of the staff who were having a mock tennis match on the back of a trailer mm -hmm. parading through the village. You wouldn't believe some of the things that used to happen. Red Nose Day. Oh, Red Nose Day. We always used to do <laughs> things in the shop and dress up and so on. So we had a lot of fun in the shop. And we used to have fun with our customers as well. So um, the, we always said that part of the pleasure of running a shop in a community like that was engaging with customers. We wanted them to feel that it was a place they could come in and have a chat and uh, really find, put a bit of a smile on their face as well. Because for a lot of them, particularly the, the older ones, it was uh, perhaps the only, only human contact they would have in the course of their day. And some of them we knew almost made up an excuse to come in and buy something just so they could have a bit of a chat and uh, um, meet up with people. And that was fine. That was tremendous because that was all part of the ethics. So we used to have we used to have great fun in the shop. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. And tell us about the joy. And obviously we're in a, a very intense and un unprecedented time. But tell us about the joyous times in your B&B. Oh, well, again, B&B &B is all about people. So it's been sadly neglected this year in that we've had, um, you know, we, we obviously haven't had people coming to stay in the same way that we could do in a normal year. Um, so that's that's been a shame because we do miss the human contact. But we, we do have a rule in our B&B &B that we only have nice people to stay. And fortunately, that so far that's worked out, hasn't it? You know, just pretty, about, pretty just much. About. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because we and we meet some lovely people. You know, mm. we really do. We've had people from all over the world come and stay, and one of the uh, one of the real privileges that in running a B and B is that by and large people are coming here on holiday for leisure, and they're coming to enjoy themselves. So we see our job as just making that easy. So. I mean, what a lovely job to have. We help people enjoy themselves. Now, you see, isn't that just a, you know, I mean, what, who could have a nicer job description? My job description <laughs> is to help people enjoy themselves. Well, hey, so, um, you know, we try and make it easy. I know, I'm getting excited again. We try and make it easy for them. So 
we help them discover the places that they can visit if they want a particular uh, walk or to see something then you know we'll uh, we'll help them organize that we'll book them a restaurant for their evening meal we cook them the breakfast in the way that they like it including over what was it oh eggs over easy eggs over easy I, now you see there's you, we could have a whole session about eggs yeah actually because eggs are really important eggs are really <laughs> important. Yeah. and you wouldn't believe no. people's different requirements and <laughs> We do have to disagree with our guests sometimes because mm -hmm. personally, I like a runny egg. If you like a poached egg or a fried egg, it needs to be soft and uh, it needs to be runny. And we have had people who have said things like, you can't overcook an egg. Can you cook it until it's absolutely rock hard? <laughs> personally, I think there should be a law against that. But, you know, if that's what makes them happy and brings them the joy, then so be it. Off we go. We will do that for them. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And also, I have to say, the decor and the fabric in your beautiful place, it is worthy of being stolen. I mean, when we've been, I could have easily squashed down the rucksack and you could have been much lighter in terms of curtains and doobies. We wondered where those cushions <laughs> went, didn't we? Yeah. Now we know, you see. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, it's my, my wife has the um, decor eye. She's terribly tasteful, you know, terribly tasteful. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was you, Patrick, or should I say Dave? Oh, well, either. I answer to most things. <laughs> Would you tell our life joy is why we call you Dave? Well, we had, in the early days of doing a B&B, &B, running our B&B, &B, we had a lovely couple come and visit from Australia. And um, they got lost on the way. They couldn't find us. We are tucked away quietly. So it does happen. People sometimes struggle to find us. And because it's difficult, we send them a sheet of instructions. So um, before they come, we email across a sheet of instructions on how to find us, depending on which direction you're traveling from. Um, well, this particular chap got totally lost and ended up in the tourist information office up in the center of Woola who phoned to say, we've got this gentleman, we've given him directions to find you, we're sending him down the road, he'll be there in two or three minutes. So I said, no problem, I'll go and stand at the end of the drive and then I can meet him and bring him in. I think it was 45 minutes it took him to come from the tourist information in Woola. Well, you could do that if you crawled backwards with one hand tied behind your back. <laughs> ah, it really doesn't take that long. Anyway, he arrived and the poor guy was terribly flustered and he said, I couldn't find you at all, couldn't find you at all. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, did you not receive the instructions that I sent you? And he said, well, I did, he said, but I didn't bring them with me. And I said, oh, that, was, that was a shame. And he said, well, I was trying to save weight in the luggage. It's one sheet of A4 paper. I mean, it's not going to make any difference. I said, well, never mind. You know, it doesn't matter. You're here now. You find us. Welcome. I said, my name is Patrick. And he said, oh, I thought you were Dave. So I said, no, uh, I'm Patrick. Oh, he said, OK, <clears throat> OK, Dave. And I said, yeah. <laughs> Patrick, yes, Dave, I heard you. And he just kept on calling me Dave. And in the end, he called me Dave so often that I thought, you know what, for, for the next few days, I'll just be Dave. And so, you know, every morning, <laughs> morning Dave, <laughs> Dave up in the end, didn't we? He did, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. he was a very nice man. And they were a very nice couple. They were tracing... Um, family and they managed to find a long lost cousin I think it was mm -hmm. up in uh, further up in, in Scotland. Scotland so they had a joyous time you know they enjoyed themselves yeah was he and called I, Dave I, I can't recall what he was called but I, a little, <laughs> I hope so a little <laughs> that's, you know says Dave just, just call case. me Dave yeah just call me Dave <laughs> Lovely. And also the joy you generated with your online services. And I have to say, there has been joy in seeing your technical progression because I have never known anybody suddenly learn Canva, YouTube, hosting, uh, Zoom codes. The multitude of tech skills you've amassed in the last six months has been marvellous. I think we've all had to get to grips with new skills, haven't we, over the past few months? And uh, I've, I see it as a challenge, really. I, um, our youngest daughter, Anna, uh, says that I've modelled myself on Monty Don on Gardener's World because uh, she says every week, Dad, you get more like Monty, you know. And I said, well, that's not a bad thing to, uh, to model myself on. He's got that very gentle, 
you know, mm. unflappable sort of appearance. I think the time it really, really sort of came home to everyone or to, to the family, that that's who you seem to be edging towards character wise, was when you were outside, you were doing those ones outside. Yes. And then he sort of walked into the shot in front of this lovely landscape and said, hello. Well, we <laughs> thought, <laughs> Sounded very seductive when you said that. I don't think I was saying hello. Like that, anyway. Not quite a vanilla building. No. No. Quite. I very nearly have said, actually, instead of welcome to Wooler URC, yes. I've nearly said on one or two occasions, welcome to Gardener's World, you know, um, yeah. So, but I can edit that bit out, so yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a balance between that and country file. Do you think? Yeah. You, yeah. Especially yeah. when you got the baker. No, especially when you were at the gate and the sheep decided to assist you in your yeah. address. Yes. yes, I really should have re-recorded that bit, but hey, you know, it gives it a pastoral feel, doesn't it? So, <laughs> it was cool. joyous. It was joyous. <laughs> well, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for joining us. And it's a joy to know and a privilege to love you. Ah, oh, Becca, Same you, here. you make our lives so much richer. So thank you for all you do. Love yes. to you and Kev. Yeah, God bless. God bless.